Welcome back. This is Philip Bickle of Legal Tyranny on June 28th, 2021. We're going to continue on my reply brief. We're in the argument section, part B. Appelli avoids acknowledging that the law specifically gives the duty and discretion of initiating a criminal proceeding to prosecuting officers while excluding enforcement officers from the definition of prosecuting officer. Appelli attempts to explain away the failure to enter timely oral charges as being the fault of the appellant, although none of the reasons given fit under the Hawaii Revised Statutes 701-1086. Appelli fails to provide evidence that I was charged orally at the December 15, 2016 appearance and we want to provide evidence of that. So immediately, we're going to cite the transcript from that day and the record on appeal in general for that day it doesn't say anything about a plea being entered or anything of that nature. So reference this. This uh, includes the docket. The appellee does not dispute this. All right, so that's key. We want to make that point, too. They're not even disputing that they didn't charge me on that day. The charge must be entered before the magistrate obtains jurisdiction of the cause against defendant. Okay, so if jurisdiction... If you haven't read case law laying out the nature of what jurisdiction is, how it has many different facets. This same word can have very different applications under different contexts. Then go through my videos. Uh, actually, go to my video, Beating a No Driver's License Ticket with Proof, and in my description there, I'm going to have a link either in my description or in my pin post. And that link will be to a uh, archive.org link for the Missouri uh, judges uh, publication that will lay out several different natures, several different ways in which uh, jurisdiction can be applied. Okay, and that, that should help clarify some things or at least help you know what other things you need to be looking for to understand this. This is a concept that is, uh, it's been dragged through the mud and with the multiple different meanings, it also makes it harder for people that just want the, the truth and the nature of a thing. They, they can't figure it out. So you got to go to the the case law to uh, really get a good idea of what this is. <clears throat> the appellee fails to provide evidence, statutes, or case law that an enforcement officer is now authorized to act as a prosecuting officer who is authorized to represent the state of Hawaii with the discretion to initiate prosecution via the entry of criminal charges. The appellee fails to provide any argument with evidence showing that the district court had jurisdiction conferred upon it by a prosecutor submitting charges to the court against me. Okay, so you'll actually see the same exact language in other cases where the court lacked jurisdiction because there was a failure to state a claim within a certain amount of time and to follow you know, whatever rules are needed, uh, depending on the party filing, say a state prosecutor versus a private party in a civil matter. The transcript of December 15, 2016, shows that the judge did not wait for the prosecutor to enter oral charges and instead began a hearing by asking me if I had a license or insurance. I objected to his questions, which were clearly the domain of the prosecutor, and I indicated that I was challenging the jurisdiction of the court. Again, see the transcript right there. Page 2, lines 12 through 24 is the discussion. Judge Frietas f refused to allow me to orally address the matter and indicated that I could file a motion. Again, let's point out what happened there. 
cite it, cite your evidence. Judge Frietas behaved as if the prosecutor had entered charges against me and asked Prosecutor Evan Smith if he planned to dismiss the charges, even though none had been filed in writing nor entered orally. As Territory v. Burham indicates, a charge must be entered before the court acquires jurisdiction against a defendant. This is ancient, okay? This, this sort of thing goes back a long time, at least... I don't know, I think they may have worked uh, this sort of thing into uh, the Magna Carta, you know, so the people just couldn't get snatched up by the king's men and taken before hidden courts. The appellee highlights Hawaii Revised Statutes 701-108-6B as if to highlight that there was a prosecution pending. However... The appellee fails to provide proof that there were charges entered by the prosecutors during the time limits imposed by HRS 701-108-F. Hence, there was no pending prosecution from the time that citation was issued on November 11, 2016 until the expiration of the statute of limitations one year later on November 11, 2017. Therefore, HRS 701-108-6B is entirely inapplicable as a means of extending the time for the entry of a charge by a prosecutor. The following case site was included in my written argument for trial. See Record on Appeal, docket number 107, pages 6 through 7. It bears repeating since the appellee expresses argument incongruent with the holdings from the case. In its jurisdiction, Section 10770, Revised Laws of Hawaii, 1945, provides only for the issuance of a complaint as the basis of a warrant of arrest. This court, in the early case of Territory v. Singh Key, the Hawaii Supreme Court, interpreting Section 606 of the Penal Code of 1897, a provision which differs but little from the present section 10770 held that the sole function of the complaint as provided for by section 606 of the penal laws is to support the issuance of a warrant or in other words to enable the magistrate to determine whether or not there is probable cause to believe that an offense has been committed by the accused so as to justify his apprehension. The complaint referred to in that section is not the charge upon which the defendant is tried. Although it is a statement in substance, and it may also be an exact language of the offense to be set forth in the charge sub subsequently entered against the defendant in court, the charge itself is, under the practice prevailing in the district courts, entered orally by the prosecuting officer upon the defendant's appearance and noted by the magistrate in his record. And it is upon the charge as thus entered that the trial is had. Okay, so this all requires emphasis. You want to study this section right here. In fact, uh, go ahead and Google. You can pull up Territory v. Sin Key. Uh, I may have snagged that off of Find Law, so you may have to go there to get it. But it's available. I have that saved. Uh, and I didn't have to go to the law library for that one. Uh, so, again, the complaint referred to in that section. Okay, now that section discusses a complaint. This is going to be something written up. And it's going to provide enough information that a judge or magistrate reading it would determine that there's probable cause for them to issue a warrant lawfully. Okay, so that is not the charge. These two are not interchangeable. Now, functionally, it may look, well, they functionally, they could potentially be almost interchangeable, as they say right here. It may be in the exact language. But that doesn't matter, 
because to move forward in the courts, the, the manner in which they present a charge is always a prosecuting officer enters it orally at the court and in the defendant's presence, obviously, so the defendant knows what's going on. Okay, so yeah, study this section, pause it, read it, go snag the uh, case site right here, Territory v. Sinki, and get the one at the, there's, uh, yeah, it's Hawaii v. Williams, you want that one also. This may be the easier one to snag, actually. Try this one first. And Territory v. Burham, also. Okay, so more than 33 years later, this court and Territory v. Burham not only quoted the foregoing language approvingly, but also noted, we are informed that the same method of entering a criminal charge in the district court still prevails. The complaint and the warrant of arrest issued thereon are but means by which the court acquires jurisdiction of the person of the defendant. A charge must be entered before the magistrate obtains jurisdiction of the cause against defendant. Okay, so a complaint will list a cause of action. A complaint, the written instrument, will list that. A charge will also describe causes. However, again, the complaint and a warrant go hand in hand when a warrant is being issued, if you're dealing with a civil matter, they don't, they can't arrest you on a civil matter, period. They've done it, and this is an issue that's uh, occurred and been a problem in the past. Okay, moving on. Neither of the new sections, however, makes provision regarding a charge entered orally or a charge in the form of a written instrument, which does not meet the requisite requisites prescribed for such a complaint. Consequently, the rule pronounced in Terry v. Singh Key remains unaltered in circumstances wherein a valid complaint is lacking. The principle established in the Singh Key case that an accusation may suppl be supplied orally compels the conclusion that a written charge subscribed by a complainant and a prosecuting officer validly served upon the accused and thereafter entered of record constitutes a sufficient accusation as a matter of law to enable not only a district court but a court of record in a trial de novo as well to provide or to proceed with prosecution where an accused is physically before the court. In absence of a formal charge, the proceedings in the district court were a nullity. So, the 20 appearances that I was ordered to before uh, proper charges were brought after the statute of limitations, those 20 were all considered by law a nullity because my circumstances were the same as what they describe here. Failure to enter a charge in time. Now, I gotta tell you, being made to appear physically, or however, I think most of it was physical at that time, but having to make 20 appearances did not feel like a nullity, okay, especially with the chronic health issues. And I won't be compensated for that. They're just gonna screw me. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap that right there. That's about... Uh, 15 minutes in or so. Uh, if you like this, found it useful, please hit the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed and you want more information like this, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the uh, notification button so that you'll know as soon as I release another one of these, I'm going to continue to try to try to get everything that I've filed over the last couple of years mapped out uh, so somebody else can benefit from this. Um, you know, and again, any of you out there that, uh, have a few, uh, bucks that you could, uh, maybe shoot my way, my PayPal, uh, information is on my, uh, Legal Tyranny channel. You can see my email address there, 
and share this uh, content with other people that you know are trying to learn and uh, maybe uh, they can't figure out if somebody is trustworthy or not. Well, I've got cases. They can look at what I've actually done. You know, I'm not just lecturing. I've got skin in the game. Remember that. I've got skin in the game here. So, share the videos. All right, until next time.